In this video, I'll show you how to create some concept art using my sketchy brush pack for Corel Painter. This is just gonna be an overview of the process rather than a step-by-step -step instructional video. These brushes can move around a lot on their own, so they're great for creating really random looking shapes, lines, and textures. I have a demonstration video that'll walk you through how to use each of these brushes, but let's just see how they can work to create a painting. So I'm gonna start with Wild Thing, and what I wanna create is something that looks like futuristic architecture. It's going to be surrounded by a landscape, so I'm gonna have all kinds of different things. I'm gonna have a building, a sky, some ground, and some trees. So I did a lot of tight, quick gestures for the architecture, and then I'm doing these long sweeping strokes for the ground. I'll use different gestures to put in some trees and some clouds surrounding everything. Then I'll select a lighter color, and I'll start to build up the three-dimensional forms, just like I would with any other object, using light and dark colors. I'm not working from a reference here, I don't have anything sketched out, I'm literally just letting the brush do the work for me. And it's kind of like when you look at a cloud and you see shapes, you'll begin to see shapes, and then you can add to them and enhance them, though you're never really gonna be able to paint very intentionally with these brushes. If you want to confine your paint to a certain area, you can use a selection like I've done here. I'm using random waves to make it look like reflective glass. Then I'll add some texture over everything with flow attraction. This is a brush that can use different merge modes, so I can change that to screen to make it lighter or multiply to make it darker. I prefer the look of chaos particles for the clouds in the sky, so I'll swap them out. I'm also using a few different layers here, that way I can experiment without worrying about ruining everything. It also gives me some room to adjust the values to make things lighter or darker. And that's kind of the goal here, is I want things to be lighter and darker, and I want there to be some areas with a lot of detail and some areas with no detail at all. In terms of lighting and shading and color, I'm going to be using the same techniques that I always use for landscapes or just painting in general. But in this case, I'm giving up a lot of the control of the brushes and letting the brushes create the shapes for me. This flow attraction brush is working well for trees, and I'm starting to see there's some trees surrounding this architecture. Now I painted this in black and white because I'm going to add a layer of color tinting or glazing. There are lots of different composite methods you could use for this. You could use colorize or multiply or color burn. I'm gonna have to equalize this to make the blacks a bit more dark so that they're not turning black when I paint over them. And all I'm doing here is just selecting different colors that make sense to me and I'm putting them in. Since this is a night scene, there's gonna be a lot of blues and purples, and the colors aren't gonna be very bright and vibrant, except for the areas on the architecture where I'm going to have some lights. Now I'm painting these on a screen layer, and I'm just using one of my regular brushes, which is the Digital Airbrush G2, which will allow me to use the merge mode of color dodge or screen or whatever I like, and that will help me build up lights. But I could also just use the glow brush if I like. You're not limited to using only the brushes in the sketchy brush pack to create a concept art painting like this. You can use really whichever brushes work. But I do want to try to do the bulk of it using the sketchy brushes. I like to flip my canvas horizontally to give me a fresh view of what I'm working on. Then I'll put in a moon over on the right. You want to keep in mind the direction of your lighting in your scene so that it matches the lighting of your objects. So right now that lighting is going to be over on the right side. If I flip the canvas again, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to keep doing the lighting on the correct side. My goal here is to incorporate as many of the brushes in this pack as I can, so I'm using Mystic Pen to put in some darker tree trunks, maybe some lighter ones off to the side here. There's a little area on this building that I don't like, so I'm just gonna make a selection of it and maybe just kinda of paint inside of it to make it look better. Next, I feel like we need some sort of object here in the foreground. So I'll just try to make some random gestures and let an organic shape appear. I want this to look like translucent glass as well, so I'm just gonna shade it appropriately. I'm gonna make some more glowing action here by using bigger airbrushes, and I'm using screen composite methods. All of this is helping these areas look like light sources. I can also add darker areas using a multiply or color burn composite method. You may notice that some of these brushes add paint depth, which may or may not be what you want. If you don't like the paint depth, you can always try adjusting the lighting to make it look better, but you may wanna just delete the impasto by going to the canvas menu and choosing clear impasto. Occasionally, you'll see me view this artwork in grayscale. I'm using a keyboard shortcut that turns on a Windows color filter. I wanna make sure that even though I'm painting in color now, that my value structure still stays intact. And now at this point, I feel like the bulk of the big objects are put in, so I'm just gonna focus on the fine details now, go into these little fine areas where I see things and just enhance them to make them stand out. 
or add more lighting and just try to make it look more interesting. Just let your mind wander. Pretend that this is your house and this is where you live. Where would you have porch lights? Where would you have stairs? What would you have inside your ice cube shaped house? One thing I'm noticing is there's a bit too much light on the shadow side, so I wanna put some shadows inside of the house. I'm just using a digital airbrush, nothing fancy, and just looking at the, some of the shapes that are already there and enhancing them, but thinking about the direction of the lighting and the contours and everything else. I'll flip the canvas again to get a fresh perspective of things. Then I might add some stars to the sky. I'll use my pepper spray brush, and then I'll go over a few of the stars to make them glow using the glow brush. While I'm at it, I'll enhance some of the glows around the lights in the scene. I'll also lighten the horizon a bit with a bigger brush, though I want to be careful not to overpaint onto my foreground objects. Probably should have done this earlier in the process, but I didn't know what I was going to be painting. I'm going to make this a shadow inside of this foreground object here. Then I'll add a vignette to the foreground and maybe a bit in the bottom corners. And I'll add a few overlay layers with warm and cool colors. I'll fade them out using layer masks with the interactive gradient tool. And this just helps to make the colors look more harmonious. I'll add just a few more finishing touches because I don't want to over render this. And I might even remove any impasto since I think it looks better without it. And with that, we have a finished painting. As you can see, the results that I got are far more unique than what I would have improvised had I sketched this out or used a reference. This only took me about one and a half hours. And in that time, I was able to add more detail than I could have if I tried to do this using my usual painting process. So there you go, that's a demonstration of how to create a concept art landscape with some architecture using my sketchy brush pack for Corel Painter. You can download these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com.